Welcome to the Griddle, guys. Thank you for joining us. You got Nate and Chris today. No Jeff. He's uh, got other commitments today. So he's building something. Where do you see that? Anyway, we are putting the Blackstone Weber to a test against each other. Yes. We're cooking the same meal on the same one. We plan on giving you guys some feedback on. We're going to do a little side by side comparison. Temperature, sure. surface, cleaning, all that like stuff. Cook. Right uh, now, we've been preheating these for 10 minutes, and uh, this very first test we're going to do, which one got hotter in 10 minutes? So we got the 28 inch versus the 36 inch, but still, we still want to check it out. That's my old boy, five, six years old now. So you have 60,000 BTUs and 36, I believe. 36,000 yeah. BTUs, but you also have 36 inches versus 28 inches. Correct. So, yeah. We'll see if the the BTUs normalize for the surface area. Thousands of cooks on that. Tonight's first cook on this one ever. All right, so uh, 10, 15 minutes, 15, 15 minutes. 15, 15, 15, 15, 15 minutes. 15 minute mark of we've high. High on both of these. And it's about 60 degrees out with a slight breeze. 585 for the Weber. Old Betsy's barely at 470. <laughs> <laughs> Old Betsy. Oh boy. All right, so the Weber, maybe that's the advantage of being a little bit smaller. It definitely got hotter faster, because we know this will eventually get to like 500 yeah, plus. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how um, much more time you can give, but yeah. Yeah, 15 minutes on high is a long time. That's a dead center, so. so. All right, better. Yeah. Just under 500 there, so that is better. Okay. Let's grab the laptop and do the variance. Yeah, we so doing? we're just gonna bounce around from left to right uh, on both of them with some temperatures. Uh, yeah, it basically takes left back, left to Six left readings middle. across the surface. Yeah, so we're just gonna see, see how this. evenly they heat. Exactly. Left corner front. 455. Wow, that's the cold spot. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I need you to check uh, left middle rear again on that one. Hold it, hold it, hold it. 485. <laughs> <laughs> you mean a <it>. check? <laughs> okay, so for today, we have some very healthy, good size ribeye steaks, some very healthy, good size center cut pork chops. I got some mushrooms, a little asparagus, and for a potato, some crispy crowns. So this is gonna be a good test because we're gonna try to sear, we're gonna cook, we're gonna roll over. So I'm actually gonna do a mushroom with a little red wine. So it'll be good. All right, so we have the temperature fluctuations. Let's get some food down on the griddle. For the pork, I'm using Rub Done Right. Barry Belcher, thank you, Barry, for sending us this. Thank you. RubDoneRight.com if you guys are interested. He gave us a couple of rubs. We've got the uh, fish, the English choice. I'm gonna use that for the pork. This stuff is delicious goes really well with pork. I actually don't even use it on fish. I just love it on pork and beef and chicken. And then this one reminds me of when I was a kid. It reminds me of the old McCormick seasonal when it was good, you know? <laughs> so this one, when you go light, we'll probably probably do some steak? of that on the beef. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah but let me get the pork seasoned up. Again, that's the rub done right. Fish angles, angler's choice. Uh, if he sent us a link, we'll certainly put it in the description. I don't know if we have one or not. Uh, yeah, well, I'll put the link to his website in. Yeah. But it's pretty straightforward, right? Rubdonright.com. But this is good stuff. I'm gonna go pretty heavy because these pork chops that Chris found, I don't even know where he found them, but <laughs> I'm pretty sure they came off a T-Rex sized pig. <laughs> we, we turned the, the griddles down low, except for the right side, we kept on medium high for these bad boys. These are gonna take the longest to cook, so we're gonna throw these on right away. And if you think that looks like a lot of seasoning, just look at how much meat is there, right? I wanna see the crust when it's Done. Yeah, we're gonna have a nice crust. I might, depending on how much of this stays on, I might even hit them again during the cooking process. Wow, that seems like a lot. <laughs> now, this stuff is uh, more herb-based than it is salt. Good. So I think we're good. Let's let that set for a minute and we can get that on the griddle. Okay, time to put the uh, pork down. We're both sitting on the way right side. He's got his heat up high over there. I got mine here. Let's throw yeah. a little oil down. You want some? Crank mine down a little bit. So if you guys go back through history in our videos, we did do thick center cut pork chops. Yeah. Start to finish on the griddle. They came out excellent. We're gonna follow that same technique here, although these are even thicker than what we cooked that time. So <laughs> I think That's we're gonna be here a, a while. A lot of moving around. The result was good. I cooked them at 140, 145, I recall. And they were delicious. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna sit here and just keep an eye on this. We'll start the steak once we get a little closer to Pork being closer to done. Yeah, because this isn't going to take long at all. And steak. Chris and I both like our steak rare, so. Yeah. 
Sounds good, Nate. I'm getting a good sizzle. I want to see the uh, backside, what, you know, the difference, mine and yours. Once yeah, you sear it. definitely. Nate's, Nate's got a little sizzle over there. Mine really quickly sizzled. I think I seared. It's I haven't flipped been, it yet. What, four minutes, five minutes? Yeah, I, I'm just, I think I'm going to flip it just to... Oh, look at that, Nate. <laughs> it's beautiful. Let mine go a little longer. That looks beautiful. I don't know if it's the seasoning color, but that's a good... I like the look. Could have done right. a little longer. Could have done a little longer, but this is going to be flipped so many times on each side. Stand the sides. I'm not worried about Especially it. Especially being this thick. Exactly. Right out of the gate, uh, a couple things. The Weber is, without a doubt, it's cooking much, much quicker than the Blackstone. Still has a pretty good sear. I don't think it's as good as the surface over here, but it is good. The temperature on this was probably what, 390, Nate? Versus yours was right around, right the same. I don't know if I it was right around the same, but for whatever reason, this is cooking much, much quicker. Not sure exactly why at this point. It's a five science. Yeah. Temperature, but one of them is better. Yeah, so we're just gonna keep browning each one of these on the sides, get everything going. We're gonna divvy up everything here, okay? So we're gonna start with some frozen browns. You wanna throw some oil down there? Yeah, yeah. Yep. That. Now the advantage here with the Blackstone for sure, is he's got more square footage. I got more geography. <laughs> yeah. The pork chops are doing great. Basically flipping every couple of minutes. Yeah. I'm gonna throw these here. right on the left hand side here, Nate. Yep. Yeah, that's good right there. Got the left burn, right burner with the pork chop on medium low. And I got these two burners, they were on medium high, they're going to high now. Chris and I differ on how we do our hash browns. He likes his low and slow, I like mine high and hot. <laughs> nah, I'm definitely low and slow. Kind of reminds me of camping, Chris. Yeah, you're right. You know? I'm cooking on one griddle, you're on the other. Oh, you mean you sit in the chair drinking while you're no. watching me cook? My shit's coming out better than yours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't recall that trip. Oh, really? You don't oh. remember that? Oh. I don't remember that. I'll have to pull up the video. Pork chops are literally, I think we got another, what, seven to 10 degrees right now? Yeah, to degrees, cook. not minutes, degrees. Yeah. Right, I'm gonna throw the asparagus down. Actually, I'm gonna take a temp on mine. Oh, actually, the mushrooms. So I'm sitting at 131, dead center. On the fillet side, I'm at 136 on the chop. So I'm gonna pull those off about 144, 145, which carryover cooking should get them to just a blush of pink, mostly white all the way through. I didn't know Chris was buying dinosaur chops. You can cut those up. They don't have to stay full. Okay. I mean the uh, mushrooms. It's full the same thing as whole? <laughs> Chrisism. It's been a while. Can I use this knife on the grill? You want some butter? Yeah. Your Royal Oak. You want slices? I you should want give a plug. Quarters? My buddy Dave, we're using your knives, buddy, that you sent me. I appreciate you. Very sharp, and they work very well. And I know you're not watching, but I'll call you and tell you to watch the video. <laughs> oh, this nice. It's a good knife. Nice and sharp. Yeah. I got another shameless plug. We're not sponsored by anyone ever, no. guys, in case you were wondering. People do occasionally send us free stuff, like Barry from uh, Rub Done Right. So I got a guy at work, peer of mine. His brother started his own company, and from what I'm told, people really like his products. I'm wearing the shirt right now. It is Weaver Fishing Lures. So you see there, custom makes fishing lures. Hopefully you can see the back. Who's that now? His name is Derek, I work with him. Oh, so, nice. Derek, how are you? Nice. But his brother is a big fisherman and uh, started making his own lures and people really love them. So he turned it from a hobby into a business. He sent me two of them. They're interesting. But if any of you guys are fishermen, you can help out a small business by going to weaverlures.com and uh, checking out his equipment, his, his fishing lures, and if they interest you, uh, you're ordering from a small family-owned business. And Derek's a pretty good guy too, so. All right, that's enough for the shameless plugs from us today, right? I think. <laughs> Maybe I one think. more, we'll see. Weber, Weber, Weber right now for me. Yeah, so I, let's I talk about show. that. Let's <laughs> talk about that, Chris. Um, Ali and Alyssa, another shout out to you guys because you're so good to us. Thank you so much. So. Well, they sent us this nice uh, press uh, right here, Nate. Did you see this? See how heavy this is? Yeah. It's really good. It's pretty. Uh, as well as a cover for the griddle, which is unbelievable. It's a nice cover. Yeah. Been tested through the windy days already. It works very well. It's a nice, uh, nice dense weight, like some other stuff out here. Dense. You talking to myself? <laughs> so I, I propose the rub done right, yeah. uh, all-purpose seasoning with some black garlic salt. It's a, the black garlic, real nice flavor. You want this heavy too, right? 
Yeah, given the again, you bought real thick steaks. Yep. Thank you for that. You bet. Which I did hit the uh, asparagus and the mushrooms with a little of this. It's just McCormick's black garlic. Uh, I know Nate's friend, uh, uh, Nate's the guy sent us some black garlic. Rubbed <laughs> on <laughs> right, sent us black garlic. We I can't we figure out all. which griddle guy took it. I think it's at Jeff's house. It might be at Jeff's house. So whatever you did for seasoning over there, Chris, you got to do over here. This is the downside of cooking tater tots, french fries, or crispy crowns. Well, I haven't had to touch mine yet. I don't know what you're doing, all that moving around. Well, that's why mine come out better. <laughs> In an informal study of everybody who has eaten your food and my food. Informal. Who we've never actually informal. asked whose tastes better, everybody said mine tastes better. <laughs> you, were just, you weren't around when I asked. That's yeah, of what course. It comes down to. Of course. I think you were in the bathroom or something. I gotta be honest, I'm very happy. So, oh, look at that. Oh, that smells Asparagus. good. Asparagus smells good. Now with my mushrooms, I'm just gonna let them cook in the butter a little bit and then I'm gonna throw them. So I'm running out of real estate a little bit here. I got plenty over here. These are all gonna be flipped. This isn't necessarily a cook-off. It's more about, hey, you know, we're gonna compare notes on, on how things cook evenly and heat. I should say, by the way, on the pork, was it? I mean, what's your, what's your, what are your uh, temperatures? I have everything right now. This one's on medium high because I'm getting that ready for the steak. The middle is on medium low, mostly low, and I am on low over here on the right, right. as well. I'm high, high, medium, medium. So we should say the last time that I took the temperature, Nate, for both griddle, both griddles, you were yeah. on high heat, I was on medium heat. Yeah, so I, I mean, so far, and we'll look at the data in a minute, but so far, it would appear that um, Weber holds a Weber is a lot, a significantly hotter than the Blackstone. And it moves quicker, which is it gets up the temperature much quicker. Going down, we really haven't t tested. I don't know that we would. So what's your plan here? Are we gonna kill some burners on the right and leave everything sit to stay warm? And I noticed you got a pan and some red wine over here. <laughs> so I'm gonna throw a cast iron. Don't let me grab that, Nate. Make sure I grab a... Bet your ass I'll let you grab it. <laughs> That'll be funny. So I got my cast iron, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the mushrooms in, and you're welcome to throw yours in here if you want. I'm just doing a little uh, wet, uh, red wine throw in here. Maybe a potato. Red wine reduction, is that the? Yeah, let it simmer for a little while. Do you want, to, want me to throw your mushrooms in here as well? I got it. I got a nice cab here, I believe. If I could read, yeah. Cab sab. And we're just gonna pour that all over. Oh, that's gonna be good. That's gonna be good. Don't forget to flip your chop, your mini pork roast. We'll let that sit in there. And we'll have some wine with our dinner now, Nate. Goes well with the steaks. All right, I'm killing my burner on the right. I'm going to zero. Because I'm gonna put the other three burners on high for the steak. That's all we got left, right? Yeah, I'm gonna throw mine. When, whenever you're ready to throw yours down, let me know. Uh, I'm pretty good here, it's just waiting. So my tater tots are not quite as crispy as I want them, so. Because you keep moving them too much. Golden brown and delicious, Chris. GBD. GBD. Mine just need a little more oil. Asparagus, looking good. Just about done on those. This is a good meal. It's kind of like your one sheet pan, by the way. What's that? One sheet pan to take it out here and put, put it on the I love that pan. <laughs> I love that pan. I finally broke down and bought commercial grade half baking sheets, guys. Absolutely love them. Especially if you're going back. Make sure they fit in the oven, which I do, yeah. which thank God. If you're going uh, back and forth to the griddle carrying food for you know groups of people, it makes life so much easier. And they don't warp, they cook even. Yep, exactly. They're clean. very sturdy. And they weren't, I forget what I paid for them, but they weren't bad. I think it was like 58 bucks for two of them. That's not a shameless plug. I'm just telling you guys I like them. I like them too. Nate got me a, a, a couple of them and he did very well. I love them. It makes me want to throw all my other pans out, to be honest with you. I don't use my other sheet. My, <laughs> I don't use my old cookie sheets anymore, I'll tell you that. Chris, I don't know. I'm pretty sure the president of Instagram is going to call me and ask for a picture of these tater tots. Those are looking good. <laughs> I'll just let one side burn and then I'll flip them and whatever size looks better, I'll... <laughs> That's the one you'll serve up yeah. when, when they go on the plate. Been there, done that. Can't blame you. You almost ready to be a steak? I am. As soon as I get these last guys turned, I'm gonna move them over to the cool side because all that's gonna sit for probably 12 to 15 minutes, I would guess, on the thickness of those steaks, which is why I killed the heat because there'll be enough residual heat rolling across the underside of the griddle, right? Right. I mean, I'm getting a nice little char on those. Nice little char. One Jeff, where are you when we need you? <laughs> ah, not the sizzle I was really looking for. Well, you do have a giant ass weight right there. Yeah, I do. Can I weigh that thing? Throw that right on there. Yeah, that would. Yeah, no, no, I, got, <laughs> I have another one inside. You caught me. I have another one inside. <laughs> I didn't think I'll you were gonna it. notice. I'll go grab it. Oh, thanks. No, I'm good. 
Look how good that looks. Oh yeah, how's that smell, Nate? Delish. <laughs> and then steak. Yeah, we're getting there. I'm digging this Weber. All right, mine's starting to bleed. All right, guys, I'm pretty much all done. I've got my steak right where I want it, 120. I'm gonna pull it off, to be honest with you. I'm gonna sit it on that rack that we got going over there on Nate's. Right. Um, taters are done. Way better than his. He looks like he burned all his. Uh, <laughs> and I'll tell you, this mushroom red wine, never done it. First time I'm trying it. Is that it coming smells over here? delicious. That's coming over there. Yeah? Did you want me to make room for yeah, it before please. you made that decision? Get with it. Perfect. Very happy so far with the uh, Camp right. Chef. Yeah, so let's talk about the differences so far with cooking on the two of these. Yes. Right? So I would say temperature reaction time is definitely faster on that one. Up you and turn down. It up yep. and down. Yep. Heats up faster, cools down faster. Real estate wise, you definitely have more here. Definitely. You know, that's significant. That is definitely, uh, you know, the Blackstone has always been that, you know, big family gathering. This is, but you get you can get food out quicker here, I think. No. But you can cook more things over there at the same time. Yeah. A uh, couple, couple of things I wish I would see on that unit. And Weber, you can take this back to the design team, but a trash bag holder would be helpful and a paper towel holder. Those are the two big ones. Trash bag holder, paper towel holder. Yeah. Hey, why are your uh, tater tots falling apart? Oh, the pot. That's perfect. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so generally speaking, though, I'd say they're pretty close. Yeah, I mean, I'll tell you what. I have no complaints about Blackstone, guys. You know, don't get me wrong. I've had that for five, six years now. Uh, served you well. It served me well. This, I do like the look. I like how it's a little more compact. I'm loving how the uh, surface is and how it cooks and the heat distribution. Very, very happy with it. And I'm looking forward to many, many more cooks. Literally my first cook on it. So time will tell as we go here, but so far loving it. And as far as that, Nate, I think it's time for the Blackstone to get off my deck. I think it is. I think it is. I'm, I'm curious to see the difference in temperature when we uh, add up the numbers that yeah, we recorded absolutely. earlier. So. It's going to go to a good home, though. I have uh, my nephew who's moving in with 10 other roommates at college. They're moving into a house. Well, there you go, 10 roommates. Uh, so look at these guys. Gonna, he's already very excited. I told him I'm going to be giving it to him. So he's going to get this, going to take it to college, and I'm going to make sure that we get some pictures or a little bit of film from those guys enjoying it. How so. is the, uh, that's awesome, perfect for that. But how's the grease over there as far as, where is the grease catch? It's right here, it comes out in this pocket here. Yeah. Which, there's very little in it right now because, but so far it looks good. No clogs and. All right, so when we when we get this food off and we clean them, we'll film that too. We'll yeah. see which one cleans easier. Right. See you guys inside. Dinner time. Well, that was one hell of a cook. And I'll tell you right now, it was enjoyable. Cheers, Nate. Cheers. That was very good. Mm. And some wine from the. From the mushrooms. Mm. Synopsis, end of day, you know, it's Weber versus Blackstone for the griddle guys, two of them. Um, what are your thoughts? I think overall it's pretty even. You know, I mean, you do have a brand new Weber. You put it up against five, six sort of a old. vintage yeah. OG Blackstone. Yeah. Um, so one of them has seen a lot of wear and tear. The numbers don't lie. The the up and down and temperature control in the Weber certainly faster. Faster response time kind of makes sense. You have less thermal mass in the cooking surface. Faster you know? as well as hotter and hotter temperature wise. Right, but you sacrifice a little bit of real estate. You do. You know. You do. So it's really it's really. <clears throat> The size of your family, who do you cook for? You know, I know the new Blackstones, they have some features that I like. They got the garbage bag thing, they got the tip towel holder. The lid. Honestly, Blackstone, if you want to send us a, a brand new Blackstone. We'll take it. We'll take it, we'll, we'll do the test address. again. <laughs> and we think Weber's gonna keep moving on, so they're gonna get better. I mean, this is their first go. Yeah. Uh, well, and so is the one we went against, was Blackstone first Actually, it was go. their first model. So, too. you know, yeah. it, it, it's, uh, I love how the, how the Weber looks. I like I like the feel of it. I like the surface. I like the grease uh, trap. I like the grease trap so far. Uh, yeah. Time will tell. You know, more repetition, more more cooks. We'll see. But so far, I'm really liking it, and uh, I'm happy with it. So from a numbers perspective, we can throw the chart up now. Basically, the charts. It's funny. They it almost mimics each other. You know, when you, where the way you took the readings, mm -hmm. right? So see how you sort of get that curve. Yeah. You know, drops up, drops up. Yep, yep. Which is ironic. It almost speaks to maybe the design of the firebox that yep. like the corners are going to be cooler in the middle because 
you see that uniformity. Interestingly, the highest reading on the Weber was 500 degrees. The highest reading on the Blackstone was 440 at the yep. same time point. So the Blackstone, again, we know it's a little bit cooler. It's about after 15 minutes. Yeah. yeah. Lowest on the Weber was 390. High, uh, lowest on the Blackstone was 360. So you have a 22% variance, right, on the Weber. You have an 18% variance on the Blackstone. So I, that's I, really a tie in my If book. I recall, it was top right on the Blackstone and bottom right on the Weber. So for what, the coolest the or the coolest, hottest? The coolest, the coolest. Yeah, bottom right corner. Yep. yep. And the coolest on the Blackstone top was, right. yep, top right. Yeah, all right, yeah, who knew? I didn't think they remember. <laughs> so anyways, what this, tell, what this tells me, right, is as far as the evenness, evenness of heat distribution, right, you got 22% versus 18%, it's the same thing. Pretty you're, close. You know, your corners are gonna be cool. Pretty your close. middle's gonna be hot. It's kind of what you expect. You actually see that when you season it, right? The middle gets black before the corners get black. Surface contact with the searing, I wanna say that we're better off on the... Uh... On the Weber? On the Weber. A little better crust. It's brand new. I mean, it's, it should be. It's brand new. You know, it's just, it hasn't been cooked on. <clears throat> been seasoned. That's about it. The Blackstone's got some age got some to age. it. Got some age. Got some, a lot of cooks on it. So, you know, it's good to be moving on right now. I'm very happy with, like I said, no knocks against Blackstone. Of course, the griddle's a griddle. Flat top's a flat top. Go buy one. Go enjoy it. Go have fun. Play with it. Make <clears> what, <throat> you know, what, what's happy for you. But right now, I'm a big Weber supporter. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, thanks for tuning in, guys. Hopefully you found this information useful. If you did, it would be helpful to us if you hit like, subscribe. Be helpful to Barry if you bought some of his rub done right. Be helpful to Derek's family if you bought a fishing lure. A lot of shameless plugs. Again, no sponsors because, well, you know, no one likes us. My buddy Dave, thanks again. Guys, you're going to ask. The food was delicious. We've been picking. we tried it. Excellent from both griddles. We're going to chow down now. <clears throat> yeah, we'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.